purposely baptized the disciples, amen, with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. He infilled them. He, amen, gave an, uh, an unction and he gave an anointing and an utterance upon their lives that they were to carry, amen, this power and this anointing to the lost and dying world, amen. And this they did as they departed the upper room. We know that 3,000 had already been saved as Peter ministered, amen, from the door of the upper room. And those that had gathered around thinking that them who was up in that room was drunk, amen, they were messed up. Something wasn't right with them because they could hear them all speaking in other languages that they knew that they had not learned. And so they thought they were drunk up there. Oh, listen, saints of God. Oh, if it could just be, amen, another time in a good red hot Pentecostal church, in a good red hot Pentecostal service, amen, that God, that we would, amen, uh, come in unity and harmony and just worship him in spirit and in truth and invite his presence in here in such a way that his glory cloud would envelop us and come in this place so thick that we could not stand to minister. Oh, listen, I want you to know that people will not and would not leave here the same as they came. Amen. Worship and praise always gets the attention of God. These disciples, they, amen, ministered to that one on the, at the gates of beautiful. They had done, amen, they had Jesus Christ in their hearts, in their lives, and now they had been filled with power from on high. They were anointed with the same anointing that was upon Christ as he walked this earth, and by the hands of these disciples, many were healed. I'm telling you, as Peter walked by, they would bring them out, amen, to the streets, and, and just so the shadow of his his body would pass over them, amen. They had such a faith, amen, in the God that these disciples were serving, amen. And just and Peter and Paul, as he ministered, he would take aprons and napkins, and, and as he ministered, amen, he would take those then after the service and give them to those that they might carry them to the ones who are sick. And as they took those, amen. Now, now you know, a lot of us, we kind of snurl our nose up. We kind of wrinkle our eyebrow. Who in the world would want a napkin or an apron that's been spit all over by a preacher? Amen. Sweat it all over. Amen. That thing probably didn't smell real good, but they took those napkins and those aprons to those that are sick and as they laid them up on them, amen, they rose up healed, amen, and blessed and touched in their body. The anointing, amen, that is up on that God gives the anointing that is given, amen, to Pastor Roger, it is transferable. That's the reason the assemblies of God, amen, we lay our hands upon those that we pray for, amen, the anointing as we worship, as we pray, as we seek the face of God, and we pray the prayer of faith, we reach out and we touch them, and that anointing is transferable, amen, it goes, amen, to those, amen, that are being prayed for. Amen. But God, amen, used them mightily. And we find that even though, amen, they were being talked about, they had been ridiculed, and they had even been commanded by the government, the town council, amen, not to talk and preach in the name of Jesus any longer. Oh, I know how what they're saying. I know where they're coming from because you see, amen, they were the ones who were standing there saying, crucify Crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. And now, amen, they see these disciples using that name. They see these disciples using the name of the one that they crucified. They're using that name and they see all the mighty miracles. They see all the great things that are being done. Oh, listen, and they're saying, we need to quieten this down. We need to shut this down, amen, because it was just a little bit 
embarrassing. But those disciples continued daily in prayer. They continued, amen, in fellowship one with another. They continued praying and seeking the face of God. And we find, amen, in chapter 3 that those disciples, chapter 4, those disciples, as they were let go, they went back to the company. They went back to the church, amen. And they, amen, began to testify. They began to praise God. They began to tell of all the great things that the Lord Jesus Christ was doing through them, amen. And as they began to worship and as they began to, amen, praise the Lord, the Bible said they prayed, amen. Everybody say prayed. And when they prayed, the glory of God came into that building and began to shake the foundation. It was so tangible. It was so real. It began to shake and sway that old building. Glory to God. And it says all of them were filled with the Holy Ghost. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. But it came through praise and worship. It came through a joint assembly there as they were faithful to join themselves together with those with like precious faith. They came together and they began to praise and to worship the Lord. We know that Solomon as he dedicated the temple when it came time to pray, they began to pray and they began to worship the Lord and the glory cloud, cloud filled the temple in such a way that no man could stand. The glory of God was so tangible and so strong. Worship is synonymous to the glory of God. The glory of God is the goodness of God. The glory of God is the kabod. It is all the good things of the Lord. It's everything that God has for you and I is contained in His glory. Moses wanted to see the glory. And I know I've mentioned this time and time again, but that's okay for the pastor to do. But Moses, when he was there, he saw all the glory. He saw all the goodness. He saw the kabod of God. And he received revelation, amen, to write, amen, Genesis. Amen, write about, amen, things that happened before he was even born. So the glory of God contains the goodness of God. And this glory came as they worshiped. As they worship. Now, worship means to revere, to honor, to adore, to praise, to pray, to glorify, to exalt, to extol, to cherish, to treasure, and to follow. If you need something from God, a good place to start is worship. Worship. And you see, you can't worship God without submission. You can't worship God without humility. Humbling yourself before the Lord and recognizing that He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Worship recognizes that He's the one who brings the salvation. He's the one who brings deliverance. He's the one who provides our every need. Worship, amen, recognizes that He is the one who is in control and that He's the one who's leading us and guiding us and preparing, amen, a place for us. Worship, amen, worship comes through faith. Faith. Amen. You see, the prayer of faith saves the sick. Now, we know that in Isaiah 53 and 5, it says, He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement or peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. And so as we put our faith and our trust and confidence in his word, and as we begin to partake of that word, amen, see, we may be sick in our body. And so we just take that word, amen. He was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities. 
peace. The chastisement of my peace was upon him. And with his stripes, I am healed. And you begin, amen, to meditate and begin to confess that word. And, amen. And, and through confessing, you begin to pray the word of God and remind what God has promised you. Amen. The benefit and the treasure that is laid up for you. And as you do, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God and the spirit man on the inside of you. That candle that's been lit on the inside of you is fed the word of God and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And the Bible said, it's like fire. Shut up in my bones. Glory to God. Once sin, man, you get your spirit, man, gets a grasp of that word. Amen. And the spirit, then the spirit of faith, amen, takes over. Glory to God. And that's when you can win the victory and receive from the Lord. By confessing his word, proclaiming his word, faith, faith. Amen. James 5 and 14 says, Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord and the prayer of faith. Everybody say faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up and if he have committed sin they shall be forgiven him the prayer of faith I've heard people say pastor I just don't have any faith and you know what my response is to that then why did you come to church why did you come to church if you don't have faith in God why did you come to church the Word of God says we are to assemble ourselves together, amen, with those with like precious faith, amen. So he must have put his faith in something there because they came to church, glory to God. You see, you walking through those doors exhibits that you got faith. Every time you open the Bible, it exhibits that you have faith. Every time you pray, amen, it lets us, amen, us know that you have faith. Every time you lift your hands and worship, you are exhibiting faith. Every Every time you sing these hymns, glory to God. Amen. You're exhibiting faith. Hallelujah. Amen. If you don't have faith, why sing? Woo. Glory to God. Look at your neighbor and say, I got faith. I got faith. Glory to God. Amen. You just go ahead and get your little thing going. I got faith. Hallelujah. I got faith. Hallelujah. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's a substance of things hoped for. What are you hoping for? Glory to God. Get the word of God. Amen. And put your faith in that. As you read that word, glory to God. Let the spirit man on the inside of you. Amen. Grab a hold of that word. And the spirit all of a sudden will say, yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it. Amen. And then it begin to grow and hang on. And God, amen, brings his provision. Hallelujah. Mark 9, 23 says, all things are possible to him that believe. All things are possible to him that believe. Psalms 34, 19 says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth them out of them all. Amen. You see, healing comes through faith, and faith is exhibited through our worship. Listen. What happened when Jesus and his disciples were on the road that led from Jericho? They're walking down the road. And the Bible said there was a man there by the name of blind Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus. And if you look in the word there, the first thing he done was he began to worship. He began to worship. Oh, Jesus, thou son of David. Oh, Jesus, in other words, he was telling Jesus who he was. He was saying, oh, Jesus, the Messiah. Amen. Because, see, the Messiah was the son of David. Amen. So he was saying, oh, Messiah. Amen. He took a, he, he took a little chance there when everybody, amen, was saying Jesus was not the Messiah. Here blind Barnabas was. He's blind. He's on the road begging. But even a blind beggar knew who Jesus was, and he began to worship 
him as the Messiah. He worshiped him as the one who could save, deliver, and heal. Glory to God. He worshiped him, and the Bible said he got his request. Jairus came to the Lord. He comes sought the Lord. And the first thing Jairus done was he worshiped the Lord. And he bid him to come to his house because his daughter was sick. He worshiped. And the Lord, amen, cannot. He cannot. Amen. Uh, He's got to get in the middle of worship. And he went. He left. And there he goes. And we know that along the way, the woman with the issue of blood, amen, she fought her way in to touch the hem of his garment. She done whatever she had to do to get a hold of the hem of his garment. That's worship, church. Listen, sometimes we come in here, we don't feel good. Sometimes we've had a bad day. I mean, sometimes husband and wife has been squabbling. I don't, don't look at me like you, like, I, you know, you don't do that, that you're more holy than all that. Some of y'all argue all the way up to the parking lot. <laughs> well, you might not, but Brenda and I do sometimes. Amen. All the way. I don't forgot what I was talking about now. (laughs) But we got to fight through all of that. When we come into this building, we need to lay aside all of that stuff, all the strife, all of that mess. Lay it aside. Give it to the God. Amen. And do what it takes to get what you need. Hallelujah. You see, a lot of times we sat here during song service. Amen. We've been in, we've been in, a, a, in the, out in society all week long. And, and I'm telling you, the enemy has drained everything out of you that was in you. And you come in here completely empty. And you are desperately needing something from the Lord. And Brother Bob starts singing the glory of God and his his hymns and the power of God and the anointing. Amen. And you're sitting here and it feels like you've got lead around your feet. It feels like you've got chains on your hands. You can't raise your hands. You can't stand up. Amen. It feels like, amen, the enemy is bombarding your thoughts with everything that went on all week long. But what you got to do is do what the old song says. Shake off those heavy bands. Lift up those holy hands and praise the Lord. Glory to God. What you need to do is kick off, amen, that lead off of your feet. Glory. Amen. Get off and just worship the Lord. Amen. Just cut a little jig for the kingdom of God. Take that, devil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Worship. It comes through worship. Worship. Seek Him and worship Him and turn from the ways of the world and away from sin and seek the healer, not the healing. Seek the healer, not the healing. That's the reason your pastor wants us to spend time in prayer before we pray for the needs on our prayer and communion. Is because I want you to seek the healer. I want you to seek Jesus. I want you to pray. I want you to worship. I want you to extol, to exalt. I want you to fervor. Amen. I want you, amen, to, amen, worship him. And his presence and his glory will fill this place. Amen. And I never read anything in the word. That said, or, or I did read, always read that where the Lord was, He was always doing good. Where His presence was. When He saw somebody was blind, He couldn't stand it. He went back there and He touched them. When He saw the man with the withered hand, Amen, He ministered to that one that had the withered hand. 
when he saw the lady that was taken in adultery and was being abused by her accusers, he stopped with mercy and grace and he ministered to her. Listen, when we worship him, he can't stay out of it. He's going to get up in the middle of it. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. As Sister Donna, amen, gives us 